We're here at Solid 2014 in San Francisco, and I'm with Steve Teixeira, who's a director on Microsoft's Internet of Things group. Steve? Hello. So tell me about what you're working on these days at Microsoft. That's a software company, but you're working on... <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Microsoft's a devices and services company. We do software, and uh, we, do, we do hardware as well. Uh, what I'm working on, though, is I'm working on the Internet of Things stuff at Microsoft. Uh, it's a space we've been in, actually, for quite a long time, um, probably about 15 years in this space. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people know us from our work in Windows CE, from our work in Windows Embedded, um, powering lots of the world's devices from cars to ATM machines to MRI machines, like mm -hmm. you name mm -hmm. it, like through your day to day, you probably encountered one or more devices running <laughs> Windows and you didn't even know it. Um, moving forward, we're doing a few, uh, a few things that are, that are maybe different than we've done in the past. Uh, one is uh, taking the modern Windows kernel and putting that on smaller devices. Hmm. We demonstrated this last month at, at Build Conference with these little, uh, these little Gal Arduino compatible Galileo boards that Intel makes. Uh, tiny little things, uh, running Windows. It's kind of, it's kind of mind blowing in some yeah, ways. Yeah. Um, and then because it's the internet of things and not just the things, um, we're working on some Azure based cloud services that enable all of these devices, whether they're mm. Microsoft devices or, or non-Microsoft devices, to connect up to cloud services and, you know, send their telemetry, do device command and control, do business intelligence over all this stuff. Right. Um, there's just, there's no shortage of cool stuff to work on. Right, right, so the magic that way happens uh, in the cloud or on the device or somewhere in between. Yeah, and, and in fact, folks want flexibility to say like, in this case, I want magic here, or in this case, I want magic here, or in this case, you know, the, the aggregation of all of these devices needs to do something magical. Right, right. So why do you want Windows on embedded, uh, embedded systems? What's the, what, do people, what do people get out of that? There's a few things. One is um, really good tools. Like one of the things that we hear consistently from customers is like, love Visual Studio, love to write to the Microsoft developer platform. So being able to bring that to a, to a type of development that's traditionally super hard, like mm -hmm. this kind of embedded device style development, usually a pretty hard thing to do. So bringing good tools, the other is just kind of bringing this modern developer platform um, one of the things we showed last month as well at, at Build is this idea of a universal application model where I can mm -hmm. kind of write one app and I can run that one app across a phone or a PC or a tablet or an Xbox console. Mm -hmm. We would like the dot, dot, dot after that to be an IoT device as well. Right, right, right. So then you build these systems that can take into account hundreds of different kinds of devices, right? That's right. And control all of them. That's right. Yeah. We're really interested in this idea of sort of uh, you know, design beyond the screen and the disappearing interface, and I think that's something that enables it, is this way that you can um, have your systems kind of anticipate your needs, link together, get data from each other, and then provide this intelligence that's in right. the cloud at a network level. That's right, yeah, we, we're, we're doing a lot of work actually in this space. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Cortana, for example, mm. one of the technologies we built that surfaces in the phone, but it's this kind of an, what we call anticipatory computing, like kind of kind of watching you a little bit, not in a not in a creepy way, but yeah, in, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> watching you, understanding you know what are your likes, what are your dislikes, where do you live, where do you work, what do you do at different times of the day, and then anticipating your needs from from that understanding, um, and being able to being able to respond. And we think that 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 concept should not should be not just be a phone thing. It should be yeah. something that extends across many devices, and of course roam with you using cloud services. Right, right, right. So are you able to take some of the intelligence you took to develop? you know, the, the cloud services, the Microsoft cloud services we all are familiar with and bring them into kind of the physical space? Um, which cloud services do you mean when you, when you say cloud services? Are you talking about identity or, or um, OneDrive? Azure and sort of uh, uh, all the big platforms. Totally, yeah. yeah. So uh, what we've built is something that we call the intelligent system service and it's completely built on top of Azure. So underneath the hood, like if you, if you crack open the hood on this thing, you'll see you know, Azure Storage and Azure Service Bus and all these kind of very technical Azure components. But on top, what we provide is, is for both developers and kind of enterprises that have a lot of devices that they need to manage, yeah. it's a simple way to speak in terms of kind of devices and messages instead right. of speaking in terms of, uh, you know, plumbing. Right, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and so uh, it is built on top of Azure. It can aggregate with a lot of other Microsoft services. 
So it makes it super easy to bring this stuff to bear in, a, in an intelligent system. Right, so it's pretty easy to extend from a system that you already have into a, an embedded system and sort of move, move information fluidly up and down the stack. Yeah, you know? I mean, our, our customers tell us that this is a requirement, right? Nobody has a greenfield. Right. Like everybody's right. got a thing. <laughs> right. And right. so one of the key requirements is can you, can you give me something that works with what I have in the office today, yeah. but maybe extends it to new scenarios? Yeah. What's your favorite project that a customer has come to you with that they're using uh, Windows on and, and sort of building out IoT systems on? Uh, there's, uh, so there's, there's a new one that we've been working on with, uh, with a particular customer that is, uh, we've, we've, we've worked with a partner to instrument the uh, escalators inside of the London Underground, starting <laughs> with the escalators, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and kind of comb through the data and realize, oh, okay, you, you can look at this data and realize, oh, uh, when this, when this uh, sprocket gives a signal that it's wobbling, that means that yeah. down the road, uh, the elevator is going to stop for safety reasons unless you proactively go ahead and replace the sprocket. Right, so you right, get right. all these very interesting real-world insights, um, but it's just, it's a cool, you know, for one thing, it's a cool setting, right? Everybody yeah. loves the tube. Um, but two, it shows that uh, it's an ultimate brownfield. Like, mm -hmm. these are properties that are hundreds in some, you know, at least more than 100 years old yeah, in yeah, some cases. Yeah. Um, and then that you can connect it to all this modern infrastructure and make, you know, make operations much more smooth instead of like, oh, the escalator stopped working. Let's go, you know, right, right, take right. the guy that we dispatched to the Victoria station and send him to Houston. Right, right. Instead, right. you could say, ah, on a regular maintenance route, we need to make sure that you know our, our, our maintenance person hits stations X, Y, and Z because those all need servicing and we'll, right. you know, we'll stop working at some point if they don't get it. Right, right. So installing this stuff on like a 125-year-old system. Um, brings up a big question that a lot of people are asking at Solid, why yeah. now, right? I mean, Microsoft has been in this area for 15 years. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, software has been around much longer than that. Yeah, that's right. And some of the tools have been available for a very long time mm -hmm. for connecting computers to sensors and actuators and stuff. So why now? Yeah, it's, I, I like to think of it as there's, there's a confluence of different things happening. One is uh, silicon and hardware continues to shrink. Like mm -hmm. Moore's law marches mercilessly forward and dies are shrinking. Um, the shrink is, is enabling us to package more power in smaller form factors. Mm -hmm. um, software, I, I think in particular, sort of the open source movement in software, there's just pervasively lots and lots of uh, giant shoulders upon which we can stand and yeah, do more interesting yeah. things. And, then new people can stand on their shoulders and so on and so on. So we've kind of built this great body of work that people can very easily leverage in a way that, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago just wasn't very easy to do. Right. Um, and then pervasive connectivity is the other thing. Um, it used to be pretty hard to be able to get a connection somewhere. You can imagine, gosh, I'm in a subway station underneath the streets of London. Like, how do you get an internet connection? But the fact is today, you know, there's cell signals down there, there's Wi-Fi signals down there. It's very easy to get, to get all devices connected. So it's kind of this, you know, smaller, cheaper hardware uh, and, and connectivity, and then uh, software building blocks that we can all build upon, I think, are the three big confluences. Awesome. It's an exciting time to be doing this. Totally. Yeah, thanks so much, Steve. My pleasure.